All right, so this is going to be a walkthrough video on this logic gate worksheet. Uh, logic gates are little collections of circuits that will take some input, and these diagrams represented as wires and labeled A and B, take some input and then give you a different kind of output. And the way that they work is by uh, using a, co a combination of transistors that are basically little tiny electric gates that will either open and close depending on what kind of electricity is flowing through, and the result of which makes it seem like the computer's thinking or making a decision. Now, that's not really happening. The computer's not really thinking. We're just sending electricity through this little network that gives the appearance of thought. Now, there's a couple styles of these gates. One is an AND gate. It looks like a big capital D. So I'm going to write AND on it. An AND gate says, give me two inputs, A and B. And there's four possible combinations of inputs you could have. I could have wire A off and wire B off. I could have wire A off and wire B on. I could have wire A on and wire B off, or I could have both wires on. And the circuitry inside of this AND gate works in a way that if both of the wires are off, the output is off. And actually, I'm going to use this symbol to ampersands because that's what we use in Java to represent AND. So the way this logic gate works, if both things are off, the output is off. If A is off and B is on, the output's off. If A is on and B is off, the output's off. But if A is on and B is on, an AND gate tells you. So AND gates are really useful if you're trying to make a decision where you need two things to be true. For example, it's raining and I have to go outside. Do I need an umbrella? Well, if you ask the computer, it's going to use an AND gate to make that decision for you. Now, the other gates that exist that are on this paper uh, are OR gates that look like this and an XOR gate, which looks just like an OR gate but with this extra little bar here. And they work the following ways. OR, XOR, and I'm going to put the symbols here. Uh, an OR gate uses two vertical bars and an XOR uses a little caret symbol. Okay, you don't need to have that memorized, but just for your reference. So an OR gate is, tells you when at least one of the gates are on. So is A on or is B on? Well, in this case, no, they're both off. So the OR gate is going to give you an off output. Uh, is A on or B is on? Well, B is on in this case, so the OR gate's on. A is on. I don't even need to look at to B if, as long as one is on. The OR gate says, yes, one is on. And then this fourth scenario, both are on. Again, at least one is on. Now, an OR gate's really useful if you just want to see if any signal's happening. So it might be, uh, you know, if it's... Uh, well, how about we're playing baseball? Now that's a bad example. Uh, we'll use the rainy again. Uh, if it's raining or it's really windy, I don't want to go outside. So I don't care if it's only rain, if it's only wind, or if it's both. If the weather's not good, I don't want to go outside. That would be a good use of an OR gate. And the third style, a XOR gate, tells you exclusively uh, whether one and only one's on. So a good example of this would be in baseball. You get on the first base if you get a hit or if you get a walk. But you can't get a hit and a walk. And if you get neither a hit nor a walk, you don't go on first base. So if both are off, the XOR gate is off. If one of them is on, the XOR gate is on. If A is on, the XOR gate is on. But if both of them are on, the XOR gate is off. Now, the interesting thing with all of these is there's this other gate called a NOT gate that just inverts the input. So if I have A going in, I have NOT A coming out. And I was going to make a separate little truth table over here for that. So if A is a 0, NOT A is a 1. If A is a 1, NOT A is a 0. Now what's interesting about that is I can always take a NOT gate, oops, a NOT gate and put it at the end of one of my logic gates to get the exact opposite results. So an AND gate plus a NOT gate becomes what's called a NAND gate, N-A-N-D. And a NAND gate has the exact opposite results of an AND gate. So instead of giving 0, 0, 0, 1, it gives 1, 1, 1, 0. The same thing goes for a NOR and a NEXOR. Now, the way you can tell if it's a NOT gate is if there's a little tiny circle 
right at the tip of one of the logic gates. And there's one example down here. So this is not an AND gate, this is a NAND gate. This is an XOR, XOR, this is an AND, this is an OR, this is an OR, an AND, an AND, an XOR, and XOR. Now, I'm going to give you a tip for how I like to proceed at this point. I've already built a little truth table for you that gives you the four possible combinations of input. A is off and A is on, B is off and B is on. That can give us four total combinations. So what I like to do is give myself a little note at the beginning of a gate to remind myself of what is going into the gate. So for example, this is the A wire. So that's capital A going in and that's capital B going out. So script A, you can see there's an XOR result, an XOR of A and B. Now we can take our little reference up here and use it to help it out, help us out. But once we know what an XOR does, we say I want one and only one to be on. Well, that's this scenario and this scenario. In this scenario and this scenario, they're either both off or both on, which an XOR doesn't like. Now, the output from this gate heads over and goes into this XOR and it also branches off here that's what the little dot means that they're, they're welded together or soldered together and goes over into this gate so again put my little cheat sheet there to tell me what the input is if we look at the top here I have this branch coming off here that says that's a capital A it also jumps the wire comes down here as a capital A so this XOR gate is an exclusive war between capital A and lowercase a. Those are these two columns. My result is X. So capital A and lowercase a are both off, so X is off. Capital A is off, lowercase a is on. XOR gives me a on. They're both on, and XOR says that's off. Capital A is off and lowercase a is, or sorry, capital A is on, lowercase a is off, so X is on. There's one of my results. Now, I'm going to go through the rest of these pretty quickly, but you can see the process and apply it as you go. I have input capital B and input capital A. That's an AND gate with, uh, and goes, goes to the lowercase b result. That's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. Little b comes all the way up here and is input here. C is the input there, but I don't have C yet, so let's go back. An AND gate of A and A. A and A are off, off, on, and off. So now I have C, lowercase c, and lowercase b going through an or. So as long as one of them is on, it's on. Both are off, both are off. C is on, b is on. Now you can see the net result for y is the exact same thing as the input for a. So this is kind of a silly logic gate because this result isn't really useful. I could have just as easily branched another wire off of here and sent it out this way and why wouldn't have been necessary. But these are just examples for practice. Let's look at this other one and we'll do this real fast as well. We have A and B going into an XOR and that's going to be my result for script A. So I have off, on, on, off and then I have that script A goes into here and also goes into here. I have uh, B and A coming into my NAND. Now, it doesn't really matter which one's which, but for consistency's sake, I want to try to draw it the right way. Now, this is a NAND gate, remember. You can tell from that little bubble here. So, I don't want when they're both on, I want any time they're not both on. The opposite of an AND. So, whereas an AND gate would be 0, 0, 0, 1, a NAND gate will give me 1, 1, 1, 0. Now that B goes into here and into here. So now how about the XOR for script A and B? I want one and only one for my result C. On, off, off, off. A and B and an AND gate for D. So I want both of them to be on. Off, on, on, off. And then finally, C and D go through an OR gate to become X. OR gate says as long as one is on, 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 
off. Well, that does it. Logic gates are not very complicated. Uh, once you get the hang of them, they're very easy to navigate. Uh, but imagine putting a millions of these together and you get what we call a computer processor that does all the thinking for all of our computers. All right, I hope that this walkthrough helped. Bye now.